Hello everyone, Tommy J here and today I'm here to show you how to make a little bit of quick gold. Now this isn't the biggest money maker uh, and it can only be done once per character but particularly if you aren't good at making money, you don't know how to play the auction house right or you don't want to farm transmog or whatever, this will give you a few thousand fairly quickly. To be exact, it's between 1950 and 2000 gold in about 30 minutes. And yeah, it's not difficult to do at all. Also, if you're not maximum level, you will get about 12 million experience out of this. Now, this is just based off what people are saying on the internet, so if that's wrong, I'll add an annotation to the video to let you know, but just to put that into perspective, that's about 85 to 86, or a third of the way from 89 to 90, but you're probably going to want a flying mount for this. So, if you're using it to level, uh, you may want a friend with a passenger flying mount. Anyway, what we're actually going to be doing in this video is collecting treasures of Pandaria. Now, these are objects that are scattered around the world, and they either give you a lump sum of gold, or will give you a grey item that sells for a decent amount of gold. There are also a few achievements associated with it, four I think. So yeah, you will get a few achievements along the way. Anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is add all of them to waypoints. Now, I'm using the add-on TomTom, and I have a few macros, and I'll put these macros in the description for those of you who want them. So the path I'm going to be taking today, I'm starting in the middle of the Vale between both of the shrines because that's fairly easy for everyone to get to. I'm just going to be flying here, down there, through the Valley of the Four Winds, south into Krasarang Wilds, north into Jade Forest, over there, then north into Kunlai, and then finally into Townlong for those of you who are wanting to kind of do this as I do it to watch how to get to each piece. So yeah, anyway let's get started. Now I will be cutting out the long flights and stuff because there are a, f a few long flights and also there are a few objects that are definitely worth skipping like for example it might take you an extra five minutes to fly for a 10 gold object and yeah I'll mention them at the point before just in case you are following it as I'm doing it. So anyway the first object is actually fairly close to where we're starting. The first few are quite close and that is just down here. So another thing about these objects that is fairly cool is that a lot of them are in really unique areas and they've all got little scenery and stuff with them. So this first one's just here, it's a chest, it's got about 9 gold. I've started on 0 gold, just to give you some idea of how much you actually get. But yeah, so onwards to the second point. Now, these next two, if you've done the legendary quest line, you may have picked one or both of them up. But yeah, the second one is just in the Tavern of the Mists, upstairs, over here in the corner. So let's loot that, it's another almost 10 gold. And then the third one is actually the first grey item we'll come across. And that is just over here if you fly directly east, up where Rathion gives a few of his little speeches. So yeah, right here. And this is our first grey item, the Hammer of Folly, and it will actually give us our first achievement. So yeah, nice little 100 gold item. Anyway, the next point I'm going to be flying to is... Sorry. This one in the middle of the Valley of the Four Winds, so I'll cut out this flight time and I'll meet you there. Alrighty, so here we are above the Cache of Pilfered Goods. Now what you want to do is go to this house here and fly directly down this hole. So this one actually has a few problems. Um, it has spawned for me right now, but I've actually done this on about four characters and it didn't spawn. So that's a little bit weird. Um, there are a few mobs here you're gonna have to deal with, but if you're level 90 or have a friend with you, you're gonna have absolutely no issue. I, for example, am about 500 eye level, so yeah. Anyway, looting this chest gives you this, just a 10 gold item. So yeah. Not super exciting on that one, but anyway. The next one we're going to is over here, the Vermin Treasure Cache, and that's just west of where you currently are. Alrighty, so this is actually one of the more interesting ones to find, and you probably haven't seen it unless you've been looking for it. So, yeah, it's just on this cliff right here. There's a little hole hidden just right there on the map. And you're going to want to fly in this hole. There is, I think, a quest mob that can spawn in here. Yep, over there. 
He doesn't drop anything as far as I know, so there's no point killing him. But just on the left, you get this treasure cache, which is worth 99 gold. Now, the next one we're going to is down here in Krasrang, the stack of papers. And as you can see, that's only worth 15 gold. So if you want to skip this, you're welcome to. And if you are, head straight over to the Saurok stone tablet right there. Alrighty, so this next one is just down here on this island, as I mentioned before, the stack of papers. Now, this is another one of those really interesting ones. Um, it's right here next to this hatch. There's a stack of pa papers. <laughs> and yeah, a little bit of numbers. I'm fairly sure that's a lost reference. Feel free to correct me if it's not. But yeah, anyway, only 15 gold. So next up, we're heading up to the Saurok stone tablet up there, just west of Zoo's Watch. Okay, so depending on what zone you're in, this one might actually look like it's in the Valley of Four Winds, but it's not. It is in Krasrang. So just west of Zoo's Watch, there is a cave. And what you're going to want to do is fly straight into that cave. Interestingly, this is actually one of the caves in the game you can fly in. So yeah, there's that. So just go down here. Um, that guy's going to attack you, but you're just going to want to kill him. And then right here, there is a stone tablet. So, worth 100 gold. So, as I mentioned before, you can mount up. You just want to fly straight out of the cave and head over to the boat building instructions. Alrighty, so here we are over at the boat building instructions. It's actually on, like, one of the easternmost points of, um, valley. So, yeah, you just want to fly down here. There's a house into the house. And here it is just on the left now. That's got a little bit of flavor text as well. Anyway, the next one we're heading to is this shrine over here, the Offering of Remembrance. Okay, so here we are at the Offering of Remembrance, just in Ordon Villages. Yeah, just in the name. Um, it's down here in the shrine, and if you leveled as Alliance, you may have already picked this one up. Anyway, you loot it, you get 11 gold, and you get a debuff for stealing from the dead. So the next one we're heading down to is here, the ship's, the ship's locker. And it's a little bit off the map, but yeah, it's just down there. So here we are down at the ship's locker, just uh, down here on the map, and there will be this boat. What you want to do is just swim underneath the water into the side of the boat. Don't worry, there are no sharks or anything here. Swim up here, and here is the chest. Looting that gives you a bit less than 100 gold. So the next point we're going to is up here. Uh, now, it's only worth 6 gold and between, I think, 1 and 4 green quality gems. So it's not the best for money. And if you want to skip that, head straight to the Lucky Pandaren coin. Anyway, we're going to this stash of gems. Okay, so here we are up at Windward Isle, and you're just going to want to fly to the north side of this mountain, fly all the way down the side, and there'll be a nice little cave at the bottom. So this actually has... I think he's a quest mob, I'm not 100% sure in it. Um, you're just going to have to deal with him, and then once you've dealt with him, loot this nice little box right here. So... Let's, if my water elemental will get out of the way, loot the box. Yep. One gem, six gold. It is up to you if that's worth it. Personally, I don't think it is, uh, because it does add at least a couple of minutes to this flight. So the next point we're going to is the lucky Pandaren coin over there. Alrighty, so here we are above the lucky Pandaren coin. You just want to fly to the west side, that's the left of these mountains, straight down through the trees, and there will be this nice little fountain right here. So dismount in the fountain somewhere right there. There is a coin and that is a good coin. Next, we are just flying straight west yet again. Now, if you leveled in this area, particularly as Horde, you may have picked at least one of these up. I know on my first character, I picked up the ancient teapot as well as that coin. So the teapot is just right here. And then the next one, the uh, Pandaren Ritual Stone, is just in the middle of the island right here, in between these stones. So, loot that bad boy. 
Next up, we're going up to the Statue of Zuen. Um, it's worth mentioning later, we are... Or there is the option to skip Momo's treasure. Now, if you are skipping Momo's treasure, it's probably worth it to head to the Terracotta Head first, then go up. Just to save a bit of time. It's a bit of a shorter route. But since we're not skipping it in the video, I'm going straight up to the Statue of Zuen. Okay, for the Statue of Zuen, you're going to want to fly past the Temple of the White Tiger, which is up there, and then straight down in the water, down here, right at the bottom, there's a little statue. And as you can see, it actually looks like Zuen. Pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. So yeah, loot this, and then we will head on to the next one, the Ancient Mogu Tablet. Alrighty, so right now I'm actually above the Ancient Mogu Tablet on the map. But it is underground, so what you want to do is fly a little bit south of this marker to the cave, which is just down here. Fly straight into this cave, which for some reason has an invisible wall up there, so just be careful for that. And down into here. There are some mobs in here, they are not aggressive at all, they won't attack you unless attacked. And you're just going to want to loot the ancient Mogu tablet. Next up, we are headed to the stolen sprite treasure, which is yet again another one indoors. Okay, so for the stolen sprite treasure, you're going to want to fly directly west from the last one and you will come out next to this cave right here. So we're going into the cave. If you have a bit of latency, you can fly a long way in. Yay, Australia. If you don't, you're going to have to deal with some sprites. They are level 87, they don't have much health. And yeah, they're fairly easy to just run past. So I'm going to invis because I'm a mage and mages can do that. But yeah, if you're not, you are probably going to have to kill them. Uh, while you're in here, be careful of stepping on these suspicious snow piles if you don't want to pull more of them because lots of them will spawn. And what you want to do is when you come to this junction right here, you go up. And then you will go left, I believe. Yep, left. At the end of this hallway, there is a little chest. You'll need to kill this guy. The others, I think, will range you. They may not. And we're going to loot this. Which is a nice little 105 gold. Unfortunately, we didn't range them. So just finish off these guys. And once you've done that, walk out of the cave. The next one we're going to is Ricktick's Tick Remover, or Ricktick's Tiny Chest, depending on what you want to call it. So just above, as in a tiny bit north of the marker, there is this entrance right here, and this is the entrance down to, I assume, Ricktick and his statue. So you loot Ricktick's Tiny Chest for 52 gold and the Tick Remover. So that right there is probably the biggest loot of everything in this entire thing at about 155 gold. Anyway, the next one we're going down to is this one right here, the Hosen Treasure Cache. So once again, we have an indoors uh, cache. You're gonna wanna start at this cave down here, fly in as far as you can, not very far, but there are these items at the side here. So what are they called? Lucky Do. If you click on the Lucky Do, you get a speed boost and I believe a dodge chance. Yep, dodge chance. So. Just run through the cave, thankfully, someone was just running out, a warlock I think, and they cleared this cave for me. If they haven't, or if someone hasn't, you're probably going to need to clear your own mobs. Anyway, right at the back here, we have the Hosen Treasure Cache, which will give you just less than 100 gold. Once again, we're a mage, so we can just run out and invis when we get to the end, or even invis right now, to stop these mobs, but yeah, you may have to kill them. Anyway, the next one we're going to is down here, the Terracotta Head, which I mentioned earlier. So here we are near the Terracotta Head. If you've quested in this area, you may have already picked this one up. And while you're here, there is a rare you should look out for called Havoc. So let's just see if he's here. He is not, but he drops an item that turns you to stone. Anyway, the Terracotta Head has several spawn points around this area. Mine is right here behind these two guys. As long as they aren't awake, they won't aggro you. Like, that one's awake, these ones are not, and while they're waking up, they get those purple lines on them. Anyway, the next one we're going to is over here, Momo's Treasure Chest. And this one, I don't think counts for the achievement or anything, but it is 11 gold and it is along the way, so, yeah. Alrighty, well, Momo's Treasure Chest right here is just in 
this cave behind Momo. And I believe he's a quest mob, so if you've done this quest, you may have been in here. If you haven't, you probably haven't. But yeah, it's worth 11 gold, or not even, 10 gold in this case. And it is not part of the achievements or anything like that. Anyway, the next one we're going down to is the Lost Adventurer's Belongings. So the Lost Adventurer's Belongings is actually another one that has a rare spawn. The rare spawn's literally right on top of it, and he is a mantid, so you need to watch out for the um, whirlwinds and the frontal cone. There's also a Kaffir crazed goat that will pretty much every time aggro you. Uh, the rare, by the way, drops the Rod of Amber Shaping, which can be very useful as it's just like literally a sap. So, yeah, that's good. Anyway, the next one we're going to is the Abandoned Crate of Goods up north of Townlong. So, the Abandoned Crate of Goods is another one that is guarded by a mob. Here we have the Blade, who I believe is a quest mob. Anyway, he's got 1.2 million health, does not hit hard, but in this little tent you have the abandoned crate of goods, which has a little bit less than 105 gold. So obviously there is a little bit of variance in this gold, um, so in the end you may be a few off. But what you want to do is finish off the blade and head down to Crives. I haven't got it explored, but there's a big tree here called Crives. So once you're down to Crives, you're going to want to scout around. The hardened sap of Crives has several spawn points, I've actually gotten very lucky and it's right here at its northernmost spawn point. So it's just in the middle of this town, right on the ground right here. So I'm going to loot that, but I will show you a few more of the spawn points. And this one is worth 110 gold. So yeah, it can spawn pretty much anywhere around this tree. There's, I believe, a spawn point somewhere around this area. Another one in between these two roots. Another one in between these next two roots. And then I've seen it spawn in one other place. And that was just around here. I think it was up there or down there. I honestly can't quite remember. Anyway, while you're here, there is another red to look out for. And he's actually spawned for us. His name is Norlax, and he drops the big bag of mysteries, which can be the big bag of any profession. Anyway, the next one we're headed to is down here near Dusklight Hollow. And that's just in the middle of the words right there. Here we are in Dusk Light Hollow, just right in the middle of the words. And directly below these words, there's this nice little bit of amber on the ground, and that contains an amber encased moth. Yeah. There is also another rare around here. Um, I believe his name is Echelon. If I'm wrong, I'll put an annotation, but he drops the big bag of cloth, which is particularly useful if you are a tailor. Anyway, we have one more to go. The Fragment of Dread to the west of New Zhao Temple. Alrighty, so for this final one, the Fragment of Dredge, you want to come to this cave entrance right here, just west of New Zhao Temple. There is a rare, who's actually dead at the moment, Yule Wild Paw, and he drops the big bag of... something. It's enchanting. It gives you enchanting mats. Anyway, you're going to want to go into this cave, and there are actually a few spawn points, and I'll show you all of them, whether or not mine's at the first or not. So, the big mobs in here, uh... The fragments, or dreadlings, sorry, they will do things that make you scared. So they will make it feel like you're falling or give you a fear of death like this. Don't worry, you're not going to die. In fact, these mobs are actually very, very weak for level 89. So yeah, don't worry too much. Anyway, the first spawn for the Fragment of Dread is anywhere in this room on any of these little spikes. So mine has spawned right here. Lucky me. I don't have to delve deeper into the cave, and that actually gives me the achievement, Riches of Pandaria, so I have found all of them right now. Anyway, I'm going to show you the other spawn point for it. The other spawn point also has a rare on it, and it is down here or up here, depending. I've never actually found it up there, but people have reported that it can spawn up there. So down here is Hugalon, and here's a rare that drops... It's a BFF token, I believe, and... Once a day, you can tell someone that they are your BFF. Yeah. Weird cosmetics. Anyway. It's either... Actually, sorry. Hugalon's down here at the top, not the bottom. But yeah, it can spawn next to him. Or 
down there in a similar kind of end to the cave. Anyway, my pet's fighting. I'm actually going to teleport. Apparently I can't teleport while in combat. One second. Let's just finish these off. And then we can go home and count our gold. See if we actually got as much as we were expecting. So here we are back in the Shrine of Two Moons. And I will just go to the nearest vendor. Sell all of the junk, as well as, I may as well sell those two as well. And we have ended at 1940 gold, which, I mean, is not terrible. In this video, it's probably taken me about 40 minutes because I have been stopping and explaining things. And also, if you're wanting to save time, if you do want the achievement, you won't be able to skip the one down in Krasarang. Um, but this one up here on Wayward Isle is honestly probably a waste of time. It's like six gold. And it, it's just a lot you have to fly extra. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, that's about 2,000 gold in 30 minutes. These won't spawn again for this character. In fact, you will never be able to see them on a character you've looted them on. Uh, but there are macros to check if you have found them. And I'll actually put a link to one of them in the description. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to favorite, like, and or subscribe. If you want to see any more WoW content, just leave me a comment or a message. And yeah, with what you want it to be. And I'll see if I can get around to it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Tommy J. Have a good one.